Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IHC Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to model pollution with runoff over the flow direction map. We will use the PC raster tools in QGIS that runs on Conda. Have a look at other videos on how to set up this environment. We'll start with data from SRTM, which has already been reprojected and clipped to the study area. Let's go to the processing toolbox and under scripts, we first need to use the convert to PC raster format tool. We choose the DEM as input and the output data type should be scalar because it's a continuous raster. And let's save it as DEM.map. We always need to convert to the PC raster format in order to use these tools from PC raster. I remove the layer that I don't need anymore. The next step is to create our local drain direction map or the flow direction map and it uses the DEM and in the documentation you can read what all these parameters mean but we use a maximum field uh, elevation model for this flow direction map. So therefore we have these high values as parameters. Calculation takes a while and there is the result. And let's also add OpenStreetMap there for our reference uh, where we can put our pollution point. Let's make a temporary scratch layer to uh, digitize our points where the pollution is taking place, like point sources. And I want them to have an ID number as a whole number. Now I can digitize uh, the points, I just put them randomly to test uh, this algorithm. And I toggle off editing and save our edits. Now we need to convert this to a raster because uh, with PC raster we can only use raster layers. So I go to raster, conversion, rasterize. I choose the points and I select the field with the IDs. I set to georeference units and use spatial resolution of 30 meter pixels. The output extent, uh, let's use there uh, the DEM or the LED, that doesn't matter. Uh, and later we will resample also the raster layers to make sure that they have the same dimensions, which is necessary for map algebra. So I'll save this to pollution.tiff. And now it's a raster file show some uh, strange random values but if we use the palleted unique values then we see that there are five raster points of 30 meter pixels not very visible on the map because they're very small but this is uh, how we can continue now we can convert this layer to the pc raster format so we'll look for the convert to pc raster format tool Choose the pollution layer. Output data type is nominal because these are classes which don't have a specific order. And make sure that you uh, save it as a .map file. So you need to change the file type to uh, .map. And there's the result. We can copy the style. and paste it to our new result. Which also has the five classes. Which we can verify if we click classify. The next step is to resample this to the same dimensions as the LDD. Because for map algebra, all the raster layers need to have the same uh, properties. Uh, cell size and extent. And because we uh, did some conversions with GDAL, we're not sure if this is exactly uh, the same, so therefore we use resample. Let's call it pollution r.map. We 
and let's see if the data is still uh, the same as the input with the five classes and that's indeed the case. The tools that we are going to use, however, don't need missing value in the background but zeros. So I'm going to make a layer with only zeros in the same data type, nominal. I can choose here any of the mask layers that are uh, correct with the dimensions. And I call this layer nominal zero. So we can uh, merge it later with our uh, pollution layer. So here we have a raster with only zeros in nominal values. To combine both layers, we use the cover tool. So with cover, you can choose a raster layer that has missing values, in our case, pollution R, and then choose the layers with which you want to cover the missing values. That can be one or more layers, and that will be applied in that order. And let's call the output pollution nominal. Then I run the tool. And I style the result with palleted unique values. You see that now also the zeros are added at the place of the missing values. So now our pollution input layer is ready to be routed over the landscape using the local drain direction. And we use two tools for that, spread LDD and spread LDD zone. But these tools need an initial friction and a friction layer. And we don't have that yet, so we will make that. And um, we can do that with the spatial tool again by setting um, all the pixels to zero scalar in the mask. And this initial friction of zero will determine that there is no friction at the starting point of routing. So therefore it's uh, zero. And then the friction will be set to one. So scalar, and that means that crossing a pixel has a unit of one, so the pixel length basically. And uh, you can also uh, use other layers for that if there is another type of friction that you want to use. But here we use zero and one. So we can now add that to this uh, spread LDD tool where we use the local drain direction as an input. For the points raster, we use the pollution nominal that we created, initial friction scalar zero and the friction scalar one. To write it to the file that we call uh, spread LDD pollution. And when I run it, I get this layer and uh, makes more sense to uh, style it. It's a continuous layer which contains the distance over the flow direction to the pollution or from the pollution to the outlet and here you see it in uh, colors but of course in our case the flows overlap of the different points so there it has to make uh, choices so you need to uh, look at it carefully when you interpret it And you can, of course, also follow it over the OpenStreetMap layer. Let's do LDD zone. With the same uh, inputs. The difference is that this will assign the value of the points to uh, the route that it takes over the flow direction. So as expected, we will have a nominal output. So I use palleted unique values, which gives a unique number to each flow, which is the same value as the points that we used for the pollution. And I've removed the zero. Um, and here we see in different colors. But of course here we also have overlap, so also be careful with that interpretation. But this is a way to see uh, the flow paths of the different uh, pollution points that we have indicated in the landscape. Another tool that we can use is the path tool, which only needs the flow direction, the LDD layer, and our pollution points.
when I run it, I get an error. And if you read this error, it says that uh, the type is nominal while the legal type is boolean. And PC Raster is really strict on that, so you should always check the help file. Um, and we can solve this easily by converting the data type of our pollution points. So pollution nominal. And we're going to change it to boolean because the path tool expects a boolean input. So all the pollution points will be uh, 1 and the zeros will remain 0. And then we can fill it in again with the boolean input. And here we have the paths of the pollution in a boolean result layer. So path and no path. So this was a lot of steps to uh, reach the result. It would be much more practical to combine this into a model where the user can just uh, have the LDD as an input because it takes a lot of time to uh, calculate, so you do that only once, and uh, the points with pollution, and that it will automatically generate uh, the outputs for the pollution paths. We can do that in the graphical modeler, so uh, let's start. Let's first give our model a name, call it pollution, and the group under which it will show up in the processing toolbox under the model tools. And I'm going to define the inputs that the user needs to provide. That's first a vector layer with the pollution source. And the user should also indicate the field that is used for uh, the values. Remember, in our case, we have nominal values of different IDs of the points, so that should be indicated. And the other layer that the user needs to provide is the local drain direction raster. Now we're going to add the tools exactly as we did uh, in the steps that I presented before. So first we need to rasterize the points. And as an input we use the pollution source and as the field we also use the model input for the field. Output raster size like we filled it in in the tool before. 30 meters, ge georeferenced units. And the output extent should be the same as the local drain direction. And there is our tool. And the next step was to convert this then to a PC raster format. So make sure to choose there the output from rasterized. And we need it as a nominal PC raster map. Then the next step was to uh, resample. And there we use the algorithm output from the conversion to PC raster format. And we use the local drain direction as an input. And I'm going to uh, report the output because it's always good if you make these models to check if the different parts uh, work. So I'm going to save the model. And then uh, I can run it. And there I already see that the order of the inputs is not really uh, logical for the user. So I want uh, the pollution source input first on the form, and then the field, and then the local drain direction. So you can uh, determine that order. Save it, and uh, I'm going to make a dummy uh, pollution layer again. with uh, numeric ID fields. Add again a couple of points in the landscape. Save it and run our preliminary model and see if it works.
it worked. So that part of the model is uh, okay. And then we continue. And if you don't define an output, then it will be in uh, memory. So the next algorithm that I need to use is to uh, add the uh, nominal zeros into the data. So I create with the spatial tool a layer with nominal zero values uh, for all the pixels that are in the local drain direction map that we use as a mask. And then with uh, cover, I can combine the pollution classes with uh, zero for the no data pixels. So I use the PC raster layer and as an input, I use there for the cover the nominal zero. And let's also test this part. There's a little mistake there. You can see it from the connections. Let's see if it runs. And also this one runs without an error, so that means it's okay. You can also uh, check the layer that comes out, but uh, as long as I don't see errors, uh, I believe that it will be correct in this case. Now I need this uh, two more spatial um, layers with uh, one value, uh, the friction, the initial friction and the friction layers. I'm going to make one with scalar zero and use the LDD again as a mask. And that will be our initial friction and then uh, scalar one. In a similar way. That will be the friction layer. Could also make that variable if the user has a friction map, if that's part of the model. But we are now just uh, replicating it for an ordinary case. And then we can apply spread LDD. Use the local drain direction raster from the input and then uh, the uh, cover layer which has our nominal classes including the zero initial friction scalar zero and the friction scalar one and that's also what we want to uh, see as an output so therefore we type here a name for the output so that will be included as a dialog entry where the user can type uh, or choose the layer name of the output so that will be in the green box here and straight same for spread LDD zone same layers as an input and also give it a name because we want to have the output let's reorganize it a bit save the model and uh, here it looks okay as we want it. If we run it, it runs without problem. And uh, let's see if it produced the results. Yes, they are there. And now uh, let's uh, remove the inputs and see how robust it is if we run it from the processing toolbox. So I'm going to create a new pollution layer. This can be any uh, vector layer that you have with pollution uh, points or areas or lines that doesn't really matter because it will be converted to raster. So in our case, it's easy to add a few points. Save it and uh, define the model here in the processing toolbox. Define the inputs and run the model. And there it is. 
a bit of styling to see the result. So these are the pollution points and then uh, with colors the different paths for each point. And then we also have the LDD um, distance results to be single band pseudo color. I invert it so the further, and it's in, in map units, so in meters. So the further from the points, the more red. Of course, here with the interpretation, we also have these uh, overlaps. So we have created a nice tool to uh, route pollution over the flow direction.